What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So we got to talk about what happened on this episode, Friday Night SmackDown. And I like some of the storylines that they've been trying to cultivate heading into Bad Blood. Obviously, the biggest storyline going on the SmackDown side of things is how is Cody and uh, Roman Reigns going to coexist with each other in their tag team match against Solo, Sokoa, and Jacob Fatu. So I, I definitely do appreciate them trying to build upon that. And they had a very great segment, probably one of but like one of the better produced WWE promo segments I've seen ever in the company. And I hope they do more segments like this because this was dope. And I can't wait to talk about that. So first things first, we got to talk about the bloodline. They didn't have solo. Uh, not so, yeah, they didn't have um solo with them tonight. It was just Jacob Fatu and uh, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. They're coming into the arena and they're by the metal detector area. And, you know, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, they get through, but they kind of, you know, not really wanting to be pat that patted down. And then Jacob Fatu come in there and he's like, hey, I got to pat you down. And he starts packing up the security officials that's just there to do their job. I mean, beating the living crap out of them. Like, man, he was over there. I'll, I'll show y'all, you know, to pat me down. I'm like, damn, bro, they just doing their job. But clearly, the story here is they are upset with how things went down last week. And they are there to make a statement. And they did by packing up some security officials. They didn't deserve that. So. Let's get, obviously, to the thing that everybody wants to talk about, and it's it's making its waves on social media. This cinematic promo segment between Cody and, and um, Roman Reigns. They were at the Georgia Tech uh, football stadium, and this was very cinematic how they presented this. Roman Reigns came in, like, on some presidential security. It was all, nothing but black SUVs, all blacked out. And he comes out, you know what I'm saying? Someone lets him out, like, he's on some security type shit. Like, not security, but presidential type shit. And then Cody, solo dolo, pulls up in a white Mustang, and they walk out into the field. And I forgot that Roman did play football at georgia tech at one point so he comes out there and he's like man this is my field you know this is my this is my um uh, my arena this is my town essentially the same thing that he has been saying in wwe he said i'm bled you know shed some blood sweat and tears on this field so yeah you know this is my city and i like cody's rebuttal basically saying and you can say that but you know, I grew up here. My family have bled in the wrestling business here. So this is my home. And I love this back and forth. I love this, this tension between them. And this is how it should be. It reminds me, and somebody mentioned it on in our chat, and, and I'm not trying to compare them, but I'm just putting in a contrast to kind of the attitude era. Now, we they're both baby faces. They're both baby faces. They're both at the top of the company. It reminds me of the Rock and Stone Cold. They were never really best friends. They were arch rivals. They were arch rivals. You know what I'm saying? One person was healed at one point. The other person was healed at one point. But they respected each other storyline-wise. You know, and the same thing here. They're not friends. They're not cool with each other, essentially. But they respect each other. And I like how Roman you know, let it be known. Like, look, I'm in this match for a reason. The blood, this, this new version of the bloodline, these new guys, they don't have nothing to lose. And I don't have nothing to lose. They took my wise man. They took Jimmy. They took the Ula Fala. They took my family. So I have nothing to lose. But why are you putting yourself into this situation? You have everything to lose. You're like, why are you doing this? Like, you, it doesn't make sense. And I love the callback that Cody brought back up. I mean, if you guys remember, I believe it was during the WrestleMania 39 build where he said, when you lose <clears throat> and there's there's nothing left, you, you don't have the tribal, you don't have your family, you don't have none of that left, what are you going to be? Where are you going to be at? He's like, I basically told you this was going to be a this was going to be happen. A tribal chief with no kingdom. When everything falls apart, what are you going to have left? And he kind of foretold 
the future. It didn't happen, obviously, at 39, but it happened at 40 because when Roman lost, that's when he started losing everything. He lost the control of his family. He's not considered the tribal chief in, you know, within the ranks of his family. He ended up losing Jimmy. He ended up losing Jay. He ended up losing the wise man. He lost everything. And essentially, Cody was like, you don't have anything now. You was the guy. You was the, the champion. You was the guy main event in WrestleMania. But that's not you anymore. Who are you now, Roman Reigns, without all the tribal chief stuff, without all the family? Who are you now? And I love that that dynamic, that question, and, and Roman realizing Cody ended up being right. He lost everything, essentially, once he lost. It, it took a little bit longer for it to happen, but he did foretell this to be the case. So, and Cody's objective essentially, essentially was he wanted Roman to make give him his word that he is going to have his back like Cody plans on having his back. That's all he cared about. Give me your word. I will have your back. And Roman said, all right, you got my word. I'm going to have your back. But when this is all done, I'm coming for my title. And then I like what Cody said. He kind of got in like, you know, Roman kind of walked away and Cody got in his face before he walked off. He's like, this is not your title. <laughs> he, he had to let it know you're not coming for your title this is my title that I, I i just want you to understand that when it's all said and done that's fine but you're not coming for your title this is my title that's what you need to understand and then he was you know he told roman told him you're in my way cody and cody stepped aside and then roman said no you're in my way in life and then walked away this was so good and me recapping it doesn't do it justice. Go watch it again. It's very cinematic. They knocked this out the park. Would love to see more situations like this. This was a really good pre-recorded situation. I loved it. Fantastic. And it really opens up the layers of Roman now realizing he doesn't have nobody. He is by himself. So they cut to a KO watching it on screen. And Byron Saxon coming over there is trying to get his thoughts and opinions on that whole situation. You can tell KO, he didn't like it. <clears throat> so they try to, Byron Saxon tried to get another interview out of KO. Like, how do you feel about what happened? I know I just asked, but how you feel about it? And he's like, you know what? I'm going to tell the world. So Kevin Owens goes out there. He's about to cut a promo basically saying how he feels. And he's about to get right into it. And he's like, man, seeing Cody out there help Roman after everything that he's done to me and everyone else and he's about to get into how he really feels and then that's when the bloodline show up that's when the bloodline show up and Tama Tonga I don't know who decided to give this motherfucker a mic but that shit was funny he came out there yeah, 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 yeah. I was like what the fuck is wrong with this man he came out there talking his trash he's like man um solo got embarrassed so on behalf of the tribal chief, we about to we about to we gonna we gonna wreck shop. We gonna we gonna destroy some people. And Kevin Owens, get one of them. And KO, he's like, man, fuck it. I love KO. I'm down to fight anybody. KO starts fighting, and then that's when DIY come out there to even up the odds. And Nick Aldis ends up setting up a a three man three way tag team match in the main event. So we get to the three-way tag team match. And all chaos towards the end of the match starts ensuing. Jacob Fatu's on everywhere. Um, you know, you got, uh, what's his name? You got uh, Kevin Owens going outside. It's just chaos. Oh, I forgot to mention, DIY got packed up before the match. It was supposed to be DIY on Kevin Owens' team, but they got packed up prior to the match. Chompa got sent to another dimension. It was just brutality. They come out there, and then the Street Profits end up helping out KO. So then in the match, more chaos ensued. I don't know why the ref called a disqualification all of a sudden. He just said, fuck, he just... He threw out the match. 
don't know why it was a it was just you know it was a tag team match there's always chaos involved i was confused but fuck it so they just started going at it and once again they have built the bloodline as this unstoppable force especially jacob fatu he was packing up Everybody, it looks like they're about to give Kevin Owens the triple power bomb from the announce table, but then injured DIY comes out there trying to even up the odds, but they weren't enough. And then finally, Cody Rose come out there with a steel chair, starts packing up the Tongans, gets into the ring with Jacob Fatu, Jacob being the fucking badass as he is, kicks the steel chair out of Cody's hand, and then Cody ends up hitting the springboard uh, Cody cutter from the second rope. And it incapacitates um, Jacob Fatu. But essentially, the bloodline, without Solo, three of these guys took out two tag teams and Kevin Owens. And it wasn't until Cody came in there to help out. But then, and this was the really good part. They're doing some good shit here. As Cody is looking down and, you know, staring at the rest of the bloodline, there's a steel chair. The same steel chair Cody brought into the ring. Kevin Owens picks up. It looks like he's about to hit uh um uh cody with it then cody turns around and then he drops the chair he gives him a hug or whatnot and they embrace but you can tell kevin owens is he's not all the way just there you know it's coming and even when they were closing off the show with the closing credits and they had the little the, the credits in the corner. You know how Triple H likes to do the credits in the corner. Like the false finish. I thought that's what it was. Because they framed it up where Kevin Owens picks up the chair again. It looked like it's about to... The show's about to end. I'm like, I'm praying, please end the show so we know it's officially over. And the show ended because it looked like he was about to hit him potentially again. It was some good stuff, bro. Uh, they're teasing it. They're teasing the idea that Kevin Owens is mad that Cody is helping Roman as he should be considering everything that roman has done to everybody involved in wwe especially kevin owens so that they're going back with that story kevin owens may potentially and justifiably may end up turning on cody the question is when that's the question so but comment down below let me know if you guys enjoyed this episode of smackdown did you guys enjoy that cinematic promo between roman and cody i thought that was the, that was some of the best produced wwe promo segment i've seen in a while from them it was fantastic i loved it and let me know if y'all wwe should do some more of that but i appreciate all love support road to 150k appreciate y'all kicking with me see you on the next one peace